you know, the, the organization does a first class job of, uh, of, of things like this, so it's very, very special and humbling and honoring to be a part of. Hall of Fames are usually about guys that get a million points. Um, you had, had your points for sure and played lots of games, and, but you didn't, you know, you had a lot of other things to your game. If you were talking to a kid today who maybe didn't see you play, what are the sort of things you did that you think got you here other than putting pucks in the net? Well, I think going to the hard areas would be one of my things that I did well, going to the net. Um, you know, I always felt like early on in my career, I was watching like Holmstrom and and um, other players, uh, Dave Anderchuk, go to the net and, and the puck would go to the net because the puck's got to end up towards that net anyway, so you might as well get your body there. So, um, you know, that type of thing, I think, is where my game was very good at. Um, but I had to really work on my defensive play early on in my career, and I think I learned a lot from guys like Craig McTavish and, um, you know, obviously existing players are uh, Nuge and Nuge, you know, things like that. So, I mean, it's important to, uh, to realize that uh, it's a it's, – it's a team game, but it's all you got to play a well-rounded game to be uh, to be successful. You, you've, you're so intrinsically linked to this organization, so you've seen the good times and the bad times. What's your sense of where it's at now, and what does it mean to you to see that the the Oilers are kind of getting back to where they? Yeah, I think lately, I think they've established themselves uh, with the last year's playoff run. Uh, yeah, we've had some really lows, we've had some highs. Uh, this team was going to be moved. They were going to move to Houston, I believe, at that one point. I think it was Cal and Bruce Saville and many others that stepped up to save the team. And now look at it. We've got a new rink downtown. You've got the Hall of Fame room. You've got, you know, two rinks that are attached. It's, it's just uh, things are on the up and up here, and I think the product's on, on the ice as well. Is that make you feel better even though you're not like on the team anymore is it kind of when you see the Oilers kind of rising up do you feel better about it? yeah I mean as uh, as a fan of the game and I always be a fan of the game I'm very very blessed and honored to be a part of this organization for numerous years and you know um, it's great to see that the uh, tradition has continued on touched on your love of Wayne Gretzky growing up uh, and then as a player you had the gloves you had the white skates you had the two-piece stick what was it like one asking the equipment staff to set that up for you and two like how, how was it like kind of like carrying on that tradition throughout your entire career yeah well a small little story early on in my career my first NHL game was against the LA Kings and it was against Wayne Gretzky my first NHL shift was against Wayne Gretzky I was lining up on left wing and he was at center and he got kicked out. Now I line up uh, against him, you know, right against me and it's just like, wow, is this really true? I'm pinching myself as I'm saying it and, um, you know, and then it evolved to where I, I you know, I played a, um, a Heritage Classic game with him and, uh, you know, he he paved the way for a lot of uh, a lot of players and, you know, I was very fortunate to, uh, to to know him and meet him. Do you remember your, the feeling you had when you first pulled on the Oilers sweater? Yeah, I mean, up at the uh, when I got drafted, when I put my draft one on, that was like the first, like, oh my gosh. But and then putting on the Oilers jersey to play a game, yeah, I mean, it brings chills to my spine right now as I talk about it. But uh, it was very special, very, uh, um, you know, a start for uh, for my career. Do you have a favorite goal? I hate to throw that to you, oh. but uh, <laughs> is there one that still well, stands out? Well, you know, on the Gretzky topic, I think there was one that I came down the wing and I shot it over. Uh, I can't even remember. I think it was, uh, it wasn't Calgary, but it came across and shot it over. I think it was Dallas, to Marty Turco's shoulder, and that was one of my favorite ones because it emulated Gretzky at the time, but uh, probably... Um, Probably your first one, you know, scored as a slap shot, and I'm not recognized as a, a guy that shoots the puck from outside the circles. Yeah. yeah. With your love of Gretzky, there's probably two different two players who played the game the complete opposite with him. Yeah. Him. Um, I guess. Uh, what did I say? Uh, I forgot the question. Were you rewriting? Do you think 
think of certain teams, certain moments, and I guess what, what comes to top of mind when you just look back on your 15, parts of 15 seasons? Yeah, I think as a, as a whole, like early on, we, 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 were very, we were a struggling organization at the time. We were struggling to get wins and, and then saving the team, like I talked about earlier with uh, Cal Nichols, uh, and, and Bruce Savile and, and many other owners, but we evolved to establish in ourselves as, as a group that we're hard-working guys, we're blue-collar guys, as uh, they talk about Dave Semenko with the blue-collar blue, blue situation. That, that's how we immolate, immolated ourselves as, uh, as players. And, you know, guys like Dougie Waite, Billy Guerin, uh, Kelly Buckberger, the guys that... Um, you know, cared about the city, cared about um, you know fans, and cared about the organization. Dug in a little deeper, and uh, uh, you know we got it back on track. Smitty, maybe just for fans that haven't really kept tabs on you since leaving the Oilers, what kind of occupies your time now, and uh, what keeps, you, keeps you busy these days? We live in Nashville now. I'm not. I don't have a singing career. <laughs> uh, people have asked me that. No, I'm a coach for my son. Um, he's 14 now, second year Bantam. Uh, my wife, she's on, uh, she has a farm, we have a farm now and she's got some animals so I help out around the farm a little bit. My daughter, she runs a, a, a sports academy down there and I'm, uh, I'm employed by her. So uh, there's, there's a lot of dynamics going around that. So yeah. Ask if there's anybody you see that plays the game, or you see yourself in that the way you played the game in the modern game right now. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's like Holmstrom was the only one that I could think of type of player. I didn't mind that McLeod. I'm not as nearly as fast as McLeod, but uh, I didn't. I watched him a little bit last night, and um, but not overly. I can. I think I don't watch too much because I'm occupied, but that would be one. Sorry, why did you stick with the wooden, the wooden stick for so long and not switch? You yeah. never switched, did you? No, I tried. I, I had uh, reps try to pass me one-piece sticks to, you know, carbon graphite blades, and I just couldn't. I just a feel, uh, personal preference. I felt like when that puck came to me at my stick, it just would stop with that wooden blade and. I wasn't recognized as a shooter, so whatever worked for me in front of the net, that's uh, what I stuck with. Well, you were recognized for your clapping. Right? <laughs> Every <laughs> once in a while I could get it. Every once in a while. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks guys. Thanks.